Welcome to Room Aboard, and this is our discussion of Animal, Animal Alco Trash. Welcome, and uh, it's me, your host, Mr. Ben Barrison. Nice to meet you. Uh, thanks for being here. We just completed ourselves a nice... Why are you looking at me like that? Uh, nothing. I'm just... Impre you have such fine... Um, a pelt? A yeah. fine pelt? You want to touch it? Rubbery. You know, Chris likes to yammer on, blah, blah, blah. But just let me tell you one thing. I love this game. This is one of my favorite games, except there needs to be more bears in it. Yeah, there's a stunning lack of the greatest Absolutely. carnivore yeah. in, in and, the natural world. And really, that, that gets it, it gets you into my, my bear books, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm, I'll pull Chris on here, and then you guys can make your little chatty chat. Whew. He he just forces his way in here, and there's no, there's no. He's got no sense of propriety. Really, he does whatever he wants, but I have to, or else he'll murder my family. Anyway, we're here to talk about uh, Anna Alcatraz and Zach's family too, which we found out during that playthrough. <laughs> we was, just was, finished playing Animal oh, Alcatraz. Yeah. That's what I was saying. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about what we think about it, Chris. First impressions of the game. Yeah, uh, but keep in mind that we just did finish uh, a paid playthrough, uh, which you can check out, which we did have a lot of fun with, but yep. just keep that in mind that uh, that's the, the, the model. However, that's why we're breaking it into these two videos because we want to be able to produce some, some exciting, fun content of showcasing the game. And then also we have this unpaid uh, final thoughts where we want to talk about the positives and the negatives and who this game is for and who it isn't, right? Because I think yeah. for all games, that kind of remains true, and we just wanted to share our thoughts here, so just keep that in mind uh, moving forward. But let's get into the game. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to know how to play, honestly, just go check out the playthrough. I don't want to rehash it too much, yeah. because we did a pretty in-depth explanation over there, and there's lots of little bits, and it would take up the majority of the time. Uh, what I want to focus on is like the fun factor, like who this game is for, mm -hmm. and, and then also what hopefully can be improved. Because also worth noting, that we're filming this like end of May before I go to the East Coast. Yeah, there's like months and months before this is kids. Yeah, started. this is gonna hit in September, so it's still a prototype, still in development, things are subject to change. Yeah. And you should check out the Kickstarter for like the fully updated uh, version of it. Yeah, right. when, so we were, when we were learning the yeah. game, a lot of the handouts and, and like help cards uh, were like self-contradictory, terms are still being changed, yeah. things were still uh, being translated in French. There are cards that are just placeholders right now. This is very much a work in progress game we've just played. But we we there's enough of it here that is in the final stages, yeah. right? Like I, I think like little tweaks might happen, rules clarification might happen, and like edge cases I feel will be clarified and and specified for the main event. Yeah, uh, uh, the bulk of the design I yeah. think is is done. It's just yeah. it's tweaks. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, so this this playthrough Zach might have been my favorite. I enjoyed it more at two players than yeah. I did at, at at four or five. Yeah, because we've played it. We've played it a variety of player counts. We played it uh, at four. We played it at five players as well. Uh, some context. We do talk about this in the playthrough, but some context is that it can play up to eight players. Yeah, and I think it legitimately could play up to eight players, right? I think so. I think the biggest thing that holds this game back. Yeah, is it is at its heart, it's a race. It's yeah. a race to get out of the prison. Yeah. It's a race to become the kingpin. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of little mechanics in this game that don't necessarily push you towards either of those objectives. Yeah. There are a lot of ways to slow down your opponent, mm -hmm. a lot of ways to trip things up, a lot of ways to make interesting things happen in game, mm -hmm. but it really it's a race. Yeah. And if some of the people around the board don't understand that it's a race or don't know how to manipulate the systems to chase that objective. Yeah. They can get behind. They can, they can fall behind. Yeah. Um, and if you're like me and you roll <laughs> terribly against someone who rolled... How many double sixes did you roll? I rolled four. God. I rolled four. I, and it's there, my proudest moment, and I'm so happy it's caught on camera. <laughs> if you watch the playthrough, there was a number of times I could have caught up. Yeah, I just needed I just needed one or two succeeded dice rolls to be even with Chris, yeah. and it never happened. Yeah. Um, I think both of those are really good points in terms of uh, deciding if this game is right for you or not. Yeah. Is that there's a lot of skill checks, right? There's a lot of dice checks. There's a lot of dice rolling. Uh, and if you don't like that aspect of it, then you're not going to like it. But if you do like that aspect of it, you love rolling dice and seeing, oh, do a check against my, my stats. Mm -hmm. Did I get it? Did I not? 
uh, then like that happens quite a lot in the gameplay loop. Yeah. Uh, and the other one that you were saying was the race aspect as well. Uh, yeah, I think you hit that right on the nose. Mm -hmm. If you don't know that it is a race or you don't pursue that, uh, then it, 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 it can, there can be a disparity. I remember when we played with five players. Yeah. We were a team. We were a team. Um, because we figured we'd played the game already before. We yep. didn't want to have an unfair advantage. Yep. And the other players around the game were still feeling out the game. They never went to go check these decks of cards yeah. for items. Yeah. They weren't really working towards the escape plan. And that's that's not because they didn't understand the game or because the game was too complicated. Yeah. There was just, there's a lot of exciting stuff to interact yeah. with here. And, and you can get distracted like a kid in a candy store and never get to the checkout. Yeah, cause it definitely. Like it builds itself as a sandbox game. And I don't know if I would, we were talking about this a yeah. little, I don't know if I would call it like a complete sandbox game because there are kind of these, only these two victory conditions and not like other different different pathways, but there is so much that you can do. And right. I think that's the intention behind building it as a sandbox game. Like one of my favorite, there are a lot of things in here that I do really like. I think my favorite aspect of this game is the ability to bribe the guards. Yeah. Because when you bribe a guard, you roll a check, and if you pass the check, they become your guard. You see this guard has a little red um, standee on it. That means that guard belonged to Zack mm -hmm. and Sick Barger. But it, the best part about it and what feels so good is you get to take that guard's action for free. It feels so strong. Another thing that feels yeah. really strong, but I, it doesn't happen very often, mm -hmm. at least in our games, yep. is if you fill these three cells with I with did it items. once and it felt really good. It felt really yeah. good, but it takes so long to to set it up, right? When you fill those three sections, you own the cell block. It's free for you to walk into it, but it costs other people's people yeah. other people an extra An action, additional action, yeah, I forgot. Which is yeah. so powerful. Yeah. Um but because this is like a racing game, if you spend the time to set that up, it might put you far enough behind that the advantage you get from walking in here for free doesn't pay off in the end. Um, I think it's super interesting, though. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I really like that aspect a lot. Anything, anything. I think it's it's we're keying in on these two things. Anything that um, helps or hinders the action efficiency, which is again at the core of this game because it is a race. Yeah. Uh, anything that kind of alters that feels really good mm -hmm. because you feel like you're manipulating the system and you're like cr cr creeping out additional actions where you didn't have them before. Even going primal. Yeah. You get additional actions, and that's most of the reason I think to you go primal, to. right? Like you want to. It explodes yeah. the potential on your turn. Yeah, um, and when someone else does it, I'm not necessarily afraid they're going to go and fight me because they're primal. Yeah, I am a little bit, but mostly I'm. I'm like, they're going to get so much more done this yeah. turn than me. Um, yeah, I think another thing you were talking about how it's labeled as a sandbox game. Yeah, yeah, it reminds me a little bit. Uh, I love Nemesis. Mm -hmm. It reminds me a bit of Nemesis in that I think that it's going for an emergent gameplay kind of thing where there are lots of different separate systems and the hope is that when all these little separate systems start interacting, interesting story things are going to start to happen. I, I, I don't think it, this is as much of a story engine oh, yeah, as Nemesis sure. at yeah. all. Yeah. I think that's what it, that's the, the kind of thing it's, it's moving towards. Interesting. But I, I think... I think all of the things I like about this game are like the purely mechanical stuff rather yeah. than the, yeah. I don't think it really makes a story happen. No. Um, so I, 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 I would, agree. I yeah. put that like a knock about it. I think it, it's, it's trying to be something like nemesis and I think it is, it's not. That's interesting. I never got that. A, I never got that a, a appearance yeah. or intention from it. I think it's its own thing. It reminded me more of dead of winter. Mm. which is have you played dead of winter it's yeah we played zombie, dead of winter yeah, a couple times the zombie game because you have these different locations in dead of winter mm -hmm. that you're always going to and you're you want to draw those items and it's so kind of item focus that's what this reminded me of of getting to the specific places right getting those specific items maybe they're traps to put into your cell mm -hmm. whatever they are I, I was thinking about nemesis because at the start of nemesis you have mm -hmm. escape the ship or fly the ship home. I see and both there's a bunch of steps to accomplish those things and there's a bunch of ways other yeah. players can prevent you from succeeding at those things. Um, and, and in that sense, there's two victory conditions and a bunch of different ways to interact with achieving or preventing those. Yeah. Um, so th that, that's something that jumped out in my brain. But yeah, I, I, I don't th I don't think it's, it's, it's 
it's the story engine of Nemesis. Like, honestly, I don't think it claims to be the story engine. Yeah. Like, I think a sandbox game, if it's a sandbox game, does that have story tied into it? I don't think so. I think it just means, like, options. It's a playground. Right? Like, a, a playground. And, and, and I get that this is a playground. I, I think my main critique about it is mm. that, like, I love doing all this, the other stuff. And I also think you don't necessarily need to, to like, for certain victory conditions, right? Yeah. Like, you could just run and ignore a lot of the stuff. And that's why I really like the module with the rat in your cell, because it slows the game enough and it makes you start developing your gang and it makes you start recruiting other people before fighting the rat. Yeah. The, uh, the, first, the yeah. first time we played the yeah. game... Uh, I think it was like turn one, you took the items from your cell, you went and got escape equipment, and you were, you were ready to escape, I think, before the end of the first day. Yeah, right? it was pretty cool. Like, we still got to, we got to midway through, but I think it's because we were exploring our options. Right. But th there was a point where you were like, I've been ready for a while, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run for the exit. Um, and I think that that is a little bit of a risk, but I, you're not really guaranteed to achieve the escape mm -hmm. unless you really crank up your stats. Yeah. I feel like it's it's viable to go there and attempt it quite early, though, if you want to swing for that. But I, the penalties for attempting are pretty severe, so that it it it's got that built in. Yeah. Like you either got to be sure, or which almost reminds me a little bit. I know we're just talking about other other games, but it almost reminds me a little bit about the feeling of Clank. You know, Clank, mm. where you just like sit outside the exit yeah. before you leave, and everyone's like, oh, "I'll take it. I'll take a secret tome." Yeah, I'll take a secret dome too until somebody jumps out and triggers the exit or something. Like that's the feeling of it's like, okay, who's going to who's gonna pull the ripcord first mm -hmm. and like go for the escape is another potential feel. Yeah, it didn't come up in our playthrough, but if you do attempt the escape early and you fail, yeah. you get sent back to your cell and all your stats are reset to their starting value. Which is so punishing. It's like, very punishing. I like that it is punishing yeah. though. It's because designed you... to stop you from going unless you're dead certain. Right. Yeah. Um, which I, I think is, is is necessary, or people are going to run for the exit yeah, as soon I agree. As, as the game starts. It would it would be broken without it. And yeah. all the, the other stuff to interact with is is fun. I want to go fight people. I yeah. want to go rob people. I want to send them to with the infirmary and then work in the infirmary to slip out their items. Mm -hmm. Like all that's is so good. Um, yeah, I was I really liked in our playthrough too that the crimes kind of came to fruition in the most. Like I was excited to have that thing. I was like, well, I think that's a pretty common item, so I'll hold on to it. And then the item did happen, and I was able to use it to trigger the riot. Like, it felt really good to do I almost completed well. my crimes twice. Oh, yeah? Didn't succeed the rolls. Oh, because you... I needed to... I needed to die the... Uh, yeah. You it, needed to fight me? I needed to fight you the one time, and I forget what I need to do the other time. Yeah. Yeah. I needed to fight you, and then I needed to um, to rob you once. Mm. But the one time I wanted to rob you, the, the spot was locked. Right. Yeah. And I tried to bribe the guard, but I couldn't get him. Right. That's why you're doing that. Yeah. So yeah, the, the the long and short of it is is that there's there's a lot going on, lots of dice rolls. Um, the, how about the like the art and the humor behind this too? Because it deals with it deals with sort of adult content, right? Like it's it's tongue in cheek, uh, but if I think it's tongue in cheek for for a specific audience, right? Like if if you're easily offended, let's say. I mean, um, I, I don't I don't even think it's easily offended. I don't think there's anything offensive here. That's true. I think the my impulse when I first looked at this game, I was like, what is this game trying to say about yeah. prisons? What is it? Does it have a thesis? Like, I mean, that's fair, yeah, right? Like, yeah. Monopoly has a as a as a has a thesis behind it as well. It's like capitalism is bad. Um, yeah. At least like, the original and, and my impulse is like prisons are sort of notoriously awful especially in north america well like is this trying to say anything are there any stereotypes being advanced here and i don't i don't think it's really trying to say anything no i think what it, what is going on here is every single trope from every single prison break story that yeah. has ever existed has been jammed in here whether those tropes are 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 are, are enjoyable or, or or not right <laughs> so you're gonna have you know, drugs and and fighting and, and prostitutes and shanks and, and hookers and all kinds yeah, of like I mean the the first player token is a shank in a toothbrush, mm -hmm. right? They have this really fun, silly electric chair whose only purpose is to show which gangster is appearing. So it's only purpose is for a module. And you turn it on and you get this little light to see who's electrocuted, <laughs> which 
you know, then they just go into the prison so they weren't actually electrocuted. It doesn't really matter. They're going on a death row, Chris. That's But that's what I mean in terms of, like, you're like, this is really story-focused. I yeah. was like, oh, yeah, because the guards can't get porn on the outside. No, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, that, it really makes a lot of sense in story. It's I don't think cute. it is. I think it's, I think it's exactly that. It's, that mm -hmm. it's those tropes that you're talking about. Bribing guards and, like, recruiting gangsters and building up your gang and, and stealing from each other and yeah. corrupting the the warden or whatever you know um yeah and i think i think there's one trope from prison stories that is not here that i wish was and it's i was innocent the whole time oh yeah because yeah that's true that's all, not all the prisoners are so irredeemably evil yeah they're covered in blood on their mug shots <laughs> they're awful people um if i if i could believe for a second i'm not supposed to be here and i need to get out even the andy dufresne cat yeah he's he's just a monster right right um, I, I would, I would love, I would love a card that I could play. Be like, but I'm innocent. Yeah, and you right? get or, out of a fight or something, or, 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 or the what guard have comes you. To your rescue. Um, yeah. but that, that's the only trope. And like, there are so many prison break tropes, and they're all yeah. here. Yeah, they really. Um, are. yeah, if you've ever watched like Orange Is the New Black or Shawshank Redemption or yeah or any of them, yeah, any I, of those, they're all, all of their stuff is here. And I think that's a good point. I think that kind of leads back to. Uh, like the, the, the sandbox style and those mm -hmm. tropes. And I think if you're interested in playing in that trope and getting enjoyment from the theme, I think you need to get enjoyment from the theme yeah. to be interested in this game, right? Because it is it does go by so quick. And so you want to, I think that's where the sandbox nature comes. If this feels like a fun sandbox to play in, like that's who I would recommend this for. Yeah. Because um, like ultimately it's a lot of dice checks. So therefore to me, like, dice checks sometimes means like lower of strategic choices right yeah and so like if you're it's a good fun rolling around running around rolling dice chucking dice at each other punching each other in the face a lot of take that with the fights that happen like a lot of the stuff the getaway um thing especially just feels like a huge slug take that fast yeah. Right, which if those sorts of things bother you in the game, then this that may also bother you in this. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you, there, there's whole game systems that are just built around skill checks, right? Yeah, like in in a sense, a lot of tabletop role playing games are really just skill checks with some context yeah. stapled to it. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, and and like if prison breaking is a context you're interested in, this is this is prison break the skill check contest. Yeah, um, and I. I I don't think that's a bad thing. I like rolling dice. I had a ton of fun rolling the dice, rolling dice in that other, in yeah. that brawl yeah, at the too. end of the game. Honestly, um, yeah, like like the thing about dice is that the highest highs can come on if you watch the playthrough. All of that is legitimate. Every time I roll a twelve, it's absurd. Oh baby, it's absurd. Like, I gotta see these. These are these. Are, they're like, they're six sided prototype. dice. It's a prototype dice. I was just double double checking. I didn't take the. Yeah, rig. Maybe, maybe there's air bubbles in them maybe or something. The rig, maybe it's the rigged dice. <laughs> no, when we swap <laughs> dice, you still we swap roll. dice a number of times. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, there's something there's something fun about rolling dice and checking them. But but that's the sort of style of game that you have to be in the in the mood for mm -hmm. this isn't going to give you that crunchy feeling this isn't going to give you that yeah. like i'm the, solving a puzzle this the, is going to give you the cleverest person around the table is not going to win yeah right it, it it's, it's true yeah, i mean it, i won you swing for the fence <laughs> and if you and if you swing well the fence will fall yeah um and sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't if that's the style of game that you're interested in then i think yeah. this is worth checking out if not then not but, yeah other little nitpicks um the beginning and end of round there's a lot of sort of upkeep mm -hmm. you roll for the guards you roll for the warden you roll for the i don't mind that too much honestly I, it's not it's not a big thing yeah. but th there are games with less i think regular honestly upkeep. the biggest nitpick for me is that <coughs> while this is really fun mm -hmm. uh it's also just hard to get the cards out of so it's like you might as well just have it on a deck and flip it over but it's fun to have so we we played with it yeah the other thing that i did want to point out is that the, the one real like major rules issue that i'm i would hope or be interested in them looking, or maybe we misinterpreted, right. uh, would be these trash tags, mm -hmm. these trash tokens, uh, because you can throw them at an opponent, and if they still have them at the end of the night, like when, when everybody goes or back when to the their night cell, occurs, when the night yeah. phase occurs, uh, they lose reputation. But uh, if you've gone for that time, then you're exposed, and everyone could presumably just come up to you and throw the trash tags on you, and then you lose all of that reputation, right? And so if that's an actual thing, I feel like <coughs> the easy fix is that, hey, you can't put a trash tag on someone who's already taken their turn. I, I think, you know? 
I don't think it's that bad because I think there's two things going on there, right? If someone's higher on the reputation track, you might want to throw cash tags on them to pull them down. Yeah. To stop them from ending the game of the ride. Yeah. The other reason you might want to throw tag, but if you're higher on reputation, I also might want to go fight you to get the same reputation as you. Yeah. But if you throw trash tags at them, then they will fight you and you can get the reputation anyway. Right. I, I, I'm basically... Oh, I'm you're, just, saying, you're saying that you wouldn't just tank someone's reputation because there's the opportunity right. for if, you to if, win one if fight. If there was the opportunity to, to me to actually win the fight, right. I wouldn't trash tag you because I would want to just go and fight you and right. get, the tra- you know, get the reputation. I see what you're saying. But I also see that like if I go first and we're playing a four-player game... Mm-hmm. And somebody and and I go first, and then everyone throws six, two of their trash tags on me. Yeah, and I get just lose six reputation. All the work that I've done to do that, and with like no chance of getting that rep back, it just would feel bad. I think the I think the rule just has to be that like you can't throw trash tags at somebody who doesn't have a turn. I think you need to be able to do it in order to if you're trying to escape. I think you need to be able to stop someone from ending the game with the riot. Right. If you if you see that coming and that's only going to happen if it happens on the very end of the fourth round before night. I, I don't think that's a particularly big, big deal. I don't know. It, feel, it feels it feels really potentially breaking. Yeah. If you're playing with people like it's like that Munchkin style thing, right? Like where yeah. you're at level eight and then a whole bunch of stuff happens to you and you go back to level two. Like all the work that you took to get to level eight is just negated by one thing. Right. Like it just doesn't feel balanced. Right. I, I guess I I don't mind it. Okay. But I, I can see why there'd be a certain number of trash tags that would make that feel really bad. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there's just a limit to one per yeah. character or something yeah, like yeah. that. Um, something something in that. And honestly, that's part of like the prototype rules element. Those are the little things that we were talking about right. at the beginning. Is just like that's one for me that I was like unsure about. But I figured I'd bring up now because it'll be in the final thoughts. Maybe it's already been addressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if not, maybe the designer will address it in the comments down below. Uh, we used a lot of modules in this game. We yep. didn't use all of the modules that are in this prototype copy. I think, in general, the pro the the modules that add to this game and add more mechanics are all a benefit. Um, yeah, I, I would rather play this game with everything than active nothing. than nothing. We've played it both ways. Yeah, we yeah. played it. We played it just the base game without any modules. Mm-hmm. We played it with every module. Yeah. This is sort of half and half. It's a balance. That was, the ones we like the best. The ones we thought were the, the coolest to show off. Yeah. The most the most finished. Uh, yeah, I, I like this game with all the modules in it. Yep. Uh, I think in retail or on Kickstarter, this is being, it's a it's going to be sort of a semi-legacy. Is you play, it's sort of like a roguelite. You'll, yeah, you'll, rogue, you'll, roguelite. Roguelite. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll play the games and on certain, certain events happening or a certain number of plays, you'll get to open envelopes and add things to the game. I, th- I think that's interesting. I think it's fun. Yeah, for me, like I've I've seen a couple campaigns do that. Like Townsfolk Tussle does that too. Right. Which we we play Townsfolk Tussle together. Uh, we play a lot of games together. Uh, <laughs> but but that idea of if you are an experienced gamer, then I would just open every every module just anyway. Like play it once base and then like uh, open yeah. every module. I think you can probably handle it. That's my instinct as well. But but I enjoy I, all of the stuff. Yeah. I think I think the gangsters add so much to the game. I think. I think that the trash tags add so much yeah. to the game. I, I like all the stuff that gets yeah. added. But I do I do appreciate that that idea of building because I think some people like to enjoy the games that way and unlock and it gives them a reason to get this get the game back to the table and experience it a little bit more. So mm-hmm. just up to your preference. But it just for me it doubles down on my own sentiment that like I don't like playing base game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I much prefer with more complexity. Yeah. I, w- I always grumble when like a game is like, here's a tutorial. And yeah. I'm like, I just don't let do me that skip anymore. it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, I think that's any, anything pretty else. Pretty much. Did we really talk about the art? We didn't. The art's awesome. The art's fantastic. Every, yeah. t- every time we've played this with people. Yeah. The first thing they say when they sit down is like, oh, great art. Yeah. And the art is great. It's really fun. It's like a cartoony... I love it's very cool. Yeah. I like it a lot. Uh, especially the characters. Some of them some of them more than others. I love the pig. Mm-hmm. The pig is great. I love Barger. Yeah. I love the zebra. They they're all just they're yeah. all very I good. I love the changes of the primal form how they have different like standee as as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know on Kickstarter we you'll see we have some of the minis they're like little busts 
And then there's also, we have the standee option where there's a standee for regular. And then when you turn into your primal form, there's another standee. So again, not sure what the price will be since we're filming this a little bit in advance. That you can always tune into Crowdfunding Countdown where I'll cover everything and have more thoughts when the campaign actually launches. Yeah. This is just, you know, impressions about gameplay and and how it plays and who it's for, mm -hmm. I think, right? Not, not those sort of extra extraneous factors that I do talk about on this channel, but uh, not going to be talking about this because we don't know about it yet. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I think that's that's pretty much it. Mm. Um, fun game. I mean, like I, ga games are fun. Games are always fun, right? Like games are fun when you play with people who you who you like. But I think if this, if you like, uh, terrible when you play with people you really can't <laughs> stand. Uh, I think if this is this is one where I, I think the art and the theme should grab you. I think if it's if you like like having a, a framework in which you can just shout at your friends and pretend to be prisoners like this is this is the game for that for sure yeah i will add i, I agree with all of that i am shocked how much i enjoyed this at two i liked it the best at two i sure. thought it was the the design we were talking to the designer was yeah. like what's the best player count for this he said four so we played it at four first to, four, he's like yeah make sure you played it at four first is like your first impression we're like okay cool so we made sure that happened I really enjoyed it too, though. I liked I, yeah, having two characters. Yeah, I liked uh, that. It felt like I had more control of what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, I lost a little bit of track of like where they started. Yeah, but I think you could easily just use the bases and remember that I'm blue and green. Yeah, you're red and white. Like that's very easy. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm very. I'm I liked very it more at two. two. Yeah, yeah, two. It being at two like really improved my opinion. I think the team mode is cool. But you just end up, it ends up just dragging it out a little bit longer. Yeah, I, when we were on a team together, we ended up fighting over items. We, like, <laughs> we didn't have enough items between us to yeah. like fully stut suit out. And there was a couple of times where you could have just taken everything and gone ham. Yeah. But I was just sitting in the corner being like, go, Chris. <laughs> Get at him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was still fun. Like it's yeah. it, it provides different experiences, but I, I would agree with you that I liked it at two. I think because you just get more actions, you feel a bit more agency mm -hmm. and you feel like you're doing more. And I think that's a benefit if you are someone who's interested in the legacy roguelite sort of situation, it's easier to play a game over and over again with two people yeah, yeah. than it is to set up eight people to play it over and over again. Yeah, I'm I'm happy that it plays yeah, for me the best at two. Honestly, it gives me a similar experience through all player accounts, though. Like, yeah. I think I like it, too, because you get more actions, so you inherently get to do more things. Yeah. And but you get I, to raise more and do more dice checks, but... The highest are the same, the lows are the same. The highest, yeah, 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 that's exactly it. So, uh, there you go. Hopefully that was helpful in determining if you want to back this or not. Uh, again, it's, it should be on Kickstarter right now, or maybe you're watching this when the alien overlords have taken over us, in which case I have hidden a copy of Animal Alcatraz in Zachary Groombridge's grave. Uh, so just dig him up. He's holding it. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Zach, you got anything else to say? Woof. <laughs> that wasn't even either of your characters. Those are the guards. <laughs> Yeah. You freaking guard! I was, oh, I was you panicking. Pig. I was panicking. You put me on the spot. <laughs> well, that's okay because you know what? What happens around here, Zach? Stays around here? No, it's Zach? just, it's just that I don't have catchphrases. Oh, I don't. Yeah, no, we don't need catchphrases okay. here. Okay, we don't need no stinking catchphrases. Oi! Get out of here! <laughs> we'll see you later. Scram! <laughs> <laughs>